Welcome to your chordal guitar lesson of the week. Today the question is how can we make our chords sound more ambient for ambient guitar? If you listen to a lot of ambient guitar music on YouTube, you probably heard those kinds of chords many times. Now the real question is why ambient guitar players choose to play those kinds of chords. So I'm gonna show you the reasoning behind uh, building our chords like that for ambient guitar. So first of all, let's say that we are writing a song and we pick a very simple chord progression of C major, E minor, A minor, and G. So any guitar player in the world, most of them who see this chord progression, their first instinct would be to play open chords like this, so we could make a song out of this chord progression that sounds like this. Or we could do bar chords too. And this is a perfect choice if you are a singer songwriter. If you have an acoustic guitar and you are just singing and playing alone, those kinds of chords are full. So this is going to complement your song as full as possible. So that's a great choice. But for ambient guitar, it's quite the opposite that we are looking for. We want our chords to be more spaced out so each individual note of the chord has more space to breathe and to ring through the reverbs, right? So that's why we don't usually choose those kinds of chords. If we want to make our chords less full, we have to remove notes from them. So if we analyze some of our open chords that we had, let's say the G major here, in a G major chord, we have G, B, and we have also D notes. So the G note inside of this one is there three times. We have it on the sixth string, the third string, and the first string. So we have three times the note G. We also have two times the note D on the fourth string and on the second string. And we have the B here on the fifth string. So we have notes that are tripled and others that are doubled. And that's why those chords are so full. Because many notes are repeated so we fill all the gaps with between the notes. This is the same principle for our E minor note. Uh, e minor chord, sorry. We have three times the note E. We have two times the note B and we have a single G note on the third string. So once again, we have tripled notes, doubled notes, and one note. So what we want to do if we want uh, to build chords for ambient guitar that are going to resonate and uh, each note that are going to take their own space, we are going to remove the notes that are doubled and tripled so we keep only one of each note. For example, so if we have the, the bar chords on for the C major chord, we have three times the note C, two times the note G, and one single E note. So we are going to keep only one C, and most of the times it's going to be the bottom note. We are going to keep the E note because it's the only one that we have. And we are going to pick one G note. And what it does is this shape that we use a lot. Like this. We could uh, pick different notes than these ones. We could pick our C note on top if we want. That would be an inversion of our chord, but most of the times we do not choose this one because it sounds more unstable. Since we don't have our root at the bottom, 
this is not grounded as much as this one is. So that's why this shape here is the best shape we could ever take for ambient guitar. So for a chord of, if we apply this principle for all our bar chords, this, this is what we would come up for this chord progression for an ambient guitar song. Or we could play the G major at the bottom too. You could actually play both and change the octave of one chord. This is a trick actually that I showed you on one of my lessons. So your chord progressions feel less repetitive. So this is not the only option. If you want more separation, even more on your ambient guitar chord progression, if you have more reverbs ringing, you could pick your notes even higher. So instead of having this shape here, I could uh, pick my G note on the second string instead, and I could pick my E note on the first string instead. So I would end up with something like this. So now we talk about separation on our chord. And I could do the same principle for all of my other chords. So my E minor chord, instead of being here, could be like this. So my, uh, my note here, my B note, I would put it on top instead. I would do the same for my A minor chord and for my uh, G major. So I could have a chord progression very separated like this. So this is very different and it breathes a lot more than this version here. Which would be best suited for other genres of music, but for ambient guitar? This is much best suited. So that's why for ambient guitar chords, we are going to remove octaves and repeated notes inside of our voicings. It's for that purpose, because we don't want the chords to be so full, because in our arrangements, we want space for the notes to develop on our loops and through our reverb effects. It's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to go further with your ambient chord structures like this, I have a free mini course that you can pick up in the description box. In this course, you have additional guitar lessons. I talk about harmonizing those chords in a sequence. You got free downloads of chord diagrams of all the net lessons. You got free downloads of exercises that you can practice to become better as those kinds of chords. So just sign up on the first link in the description box and uh, it's my gift to you, so you should take it. All right, if you are new here, turn on the notifications and subscribe, of course. And until next time, I will see you very soon with a new lesson. Au revoir, my friends.